Hello, NASDAQ followers, and welcome to this very special episode of Behind the Bell. I'm your host, Leanne Alfaro. Joining me today is Monik Dillon, president of Victory Shares and Solutions. Monik, thank you so much for being with us here today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Start by telling us a little bit more about Victory Capital's mission, vision, and who it serves. So Victory Capital offers a, a next generation integrated multi-boutique model. You know, we've really built um, the platform, the business on aligning best in class, highly skilled investment managers, offering them autonomy to manage the assets that they uh, do so for clients in a very independent way, and then support them with all of the other features and resources that we can, so they can focus on delivering those client outcomes. And really our mission at the end of the day, whether it's through one of our active franchises or through our solutions business, which includes Victory Shares, our ETF platform, it's about advancing client outcomes. Um, doing that in various asset classes, various geographies, various parts of the cap spectrum, across active um, equity to active fixed income to rules-based equity. Uh, and so really being able to offer clients a complete set of tools to build that outcome-oriented, solution-oriented portfolio they desire. What does your relationship with NASDAQ mean to the company? Well, I, as you said, I mean, we're listed on, uh, on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange, um, but our relationship with NASDAQ goes well beyond that. Is it goes deeper than that. Uh, so we've been working with NASDAQ on the index side on our ETF platform for quite some time. Victory Shares is our ETF platform, as I mentioned, and we entered the ETF business back in 2015. And we've organically grown that platform to the 23 ETFs we've had, but we wouldn't have been able to do that without the partnership we, we have with the NASDAQ index business. So where we worked with them on common sources of IP, um, we actually transitioned some of our original flagship indexes uh, to the NASDAQ index platform and have created many new um, ideas and uh, methodologies in conjunction with the team there that have manifested through one of those ETFs that I mentioned. You know, most recently, you know, in September, we launched Triple QN, which is off of the NASDAQ Next 50 um, or Q, NASDAQ Q50 index, which offers exposure to the next 50 stocks that are eligible for the NASDAQ 100, which everybody really knows. And uh, that was an instance where it was based on that common uh, theme of wanting to offer innovative, disruptive type access to strategies uh, that we just started having a conversation and we brought that product um, you know, to investors. Now, on that note, you launched three thematic ETFs recently. Why do you think it's an important part of an investor's toolkit? Well, let's also think about where ETFs started. You know, ETFs started really to democratize investing, offer access to the common investor, uh, to a basket of companies in a, in a very easy and efficient way. Uh, the outcome is tax efficient. It's relatively low cost. And over the years, there's been a lot of product proliferation beyond just access type vehicles. And thematic investing really comes back to that. I think the core of how ETFs began on, on saying, I'm going to offer you a way to easily access something you understand, something you believe in, and something you feel fits into your portfolio. So if you think about our, our first launch, which I just mentioned, which was Triple QN, the Victory Shares NASDAQ Next 50 ETF, it's really for folks who want access to potential innovators and disruptors who could potentially be tomorrow's leaders uh, in the industry. Um, VTRN or veteran offers access to top veteran employers. So it's the Victory Shares top veteran employers ETF. So these are the companies uh, that are doing a lot from uh, a support aspect of military members, uh, active past military reservists, and then SHIELD which is another area of the market which stand that we think stood to, to potentially improve upon. So SHIELD is the Victory Shares Protect America ETF. But what it does differently than other aerospace and defense ETFs is say, why not use things like artificial intelligence and machine learning to identify the companies that are actually doing business with agencies such as the Department of Homeland Security, Energy, Defense, and NASA. So rather than just taking a very old school approach to categorizing companies based on their industry or sector classification, use the actual information such as their contracts and the intellectual property they're developing. So again, just ways to further the envelope, evolve the strategies, but the core here is provide access to things people understand and want. 
Victory Capital is here to ring the closing bell on Veterans Day, and that is no coincidence. How are you working with this community and impacting it through your products and services? So it's very, um, it, it's very much an honor for us to have the opportunity to ring the closing bell on Veterans Day. Um, it's not just another day to us. Uh, so we, we serve a tremendous uh, component of the military community uh, through, through our business, our direct uh, business, to where we actually sit down and can help uh, active past members of the military figure out how to align their portfolios to their financial goals and needs of the future. Um, that's, a very, that's a very important mission for us. Because one of the things that we, we've realized is um, if, if we can help people better understand um, what it takes to build an appropriately diversified portfolio, align it with your risk tolerance, align it with your goals and, and the needs for those assets going forward, and then provide them the tools to help actually execute or build you know, the, the final outcome, um, we can improve tremendously tremendously, hopefully, uh, people's financial security or their likelihood of financial security into the future. So one of the things that we're really proud of is, you know, not only being able to ring the bell on Veterans Day, but also announce VTRN, which is our ETF uh, that identifies the top employers of, of veterans that I talked about. In addition to just launching the ETF, we're also committing to um, share a portion of the fees that, gener that we generate from that product uh, on an annual basis to our financial readiness initiative. Because one of the things that we, we feel very strongly about and are very committed to is helping people improve the, the knowledge, the access to tools, the education that can help them better secure their financial future. With Victory Shares now offering 23 ETFs across equities and active fixed income, what is your next platform? So we're always trying to figure out how to better, um, better offer products that can advance those client outcomes like I talked about. You know, for us, we do take the word solutions, the word outcome very seriously. So what we often do is start with the end result that we think is appropriate for a particular client or investor or a base of clients and build backwards to say, how can we deliver that in the most effective, repeatable and cost effective way? So as we think about um, what could potentially come next, we look at what's available in our platform today. We look at what's available in the marketplace today and say, how can we evolve that? Because if, if our industry stands still, that's at a detriment to all investors. So our mission has been on the Victory Shares platform to continuously evolve products for the future. So an example of that, you know, I don't I think a lot of people know, we offer active fixed income ETFs. We have a tremendous active fixed income capability. We feel there's an opportunity for us to offer that through ETFs in the future as well. Um, if you think about some of the products that we've, we have launched historically, take VSDA, which is the Victory Shares Dividend Accelerator ETF. All it did was try to say, is there a better way to identify dividend growers than some of the past products in the marketplace have done? So we're always looking at ways to evolve the portfolio that way. And that's what you can probably expect from us going forward is say, how do we take our existing capabilities, whether they're active or passive, and then continue to improve upon what's potentially out there in the marketplace today so the clients can be uh, more confident in, in the tools that are now going into the portfolio. We need to address 2020 and its impact on business. How have you adapted during this time and continued education with clients as well as kept in touch with them? No, that's a really timely and relevant question given the environment we're all working in, you know, with the, with the pandemic and the market volatility. Um, you know, first and foremost, what we've done is rely on our history of being very technologically forward. Um, one thing that this in current pandemic and the associated environment has done is caused companies like us to rely on those roots of being very technologically forward. So we've been very used to using technology to communicate across our organization for many years. And so now we've had to take that and use it to get the message across to potential investors and current clients. And we've, we've done is take that and extend it digitally uh, to our audiences, whether it be across the retail institutional or direct 
client base so that we can deliver our messages virtually, like in conversations like this, uh, do so digitally um, through short videos, do it through content that is perhaps more simplified now than it would be if we were sitting face to face um, from somebody across the table in their office. But that's the challenge that any asset manager has these days is, you know, often what we do is very complex, um, but important. And how do you take that message and, and streamline it down? But being able to have folks on the team that can translate it into very digestible pieces of digital content, collateral, and messages is very important. The other thing that's been very uh, important to the success we've been able to have to interact and, and help clients through these volatile times has been the access. So, you know, as everybody knows, um, you know, one of the benefits of not traveling and, and, and doing all those things is we're available. We've been incredibly available for our clients. We've actually done things to more um, create open door sessions for some of our clients and channels where we are always available uh, um, to answer any questions about market volatility, potential portfolio positioning. And then, you know, really it's, it's about that because, you know, one of the things the pandemic has shown us is it's challenging enough in and of itself for everything that everybody is dealing with on the home front but then it was also coupled with market volatility. And so that's a very stressful situation, I think, for investors. And so we've done everything in our power to at least virtually and digitally help them through these times. Talk to us a little bit more about what ringing the closing bell at NASDAQ on Veterans Day means to Victory Capital. Yeah, so given such a large part of our investor base, our client base um, is either active or past military, it, it's a very, um, it's a, it's a meaningful honor for us to be able to ring the closing bell on Veterans Day. Um, you know, we are forever indebted to the service um, that these men and women have provided to protecting our nation and our freedom. And, you know, what we hope to do in a go forward basis is help them protect their financial future. And so we're here for them as they've been there for us. And, and we're really excited about being able to take products like Veteran and Shield and Triple QN and help them solidify that financial future potentially. But then also, like I mentioned, in terms of what we're doing around um, taking a portion of our the proceeds or fees from Veteran and putting that back into the financial readiness initiatives that we're working on, we think together, you know, when you offer a, a well-designed product with the right education, you can really create for a, a really strong outcome for investors uh, into the future. Monik, thank you so much for joining us on Behind the Bell and sharing a little bit more about the company. No, thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. NASDAQ followers, please stay tuned for more coverage coming to you right here from the NASDAQ channels. Until next time, we are signing off.